It was an extraordinary time hearing the news of the Queen's death on Thursday afternoon. I think it's all struck us so profoundly. And it's a moment where things that have always been solid and firm and predictable in our lives seem to be undermined and threatened. And so as individuals and as a community and as a nation, we are experiencing that sense of uncertainty and uh, uh, disorientation at this time. But as people of faith, we can affirm that the rock of stability which the Queen has been for us uh, is underpinned, as you and I are underpinned, by the everlasting arms of God's love. And it is to that stability that we uh, must uh, return at this time. Thinking of the events of this these past few days, what strikes me particularly is that this has been a good death for the Queen. All of our lives come to a conclusion. And she ended her life having fulfilled her duties uh, on Tuesday, uh, with the outgoing and the incoming Prime Minister. She was in a place that she loved, uh, with her family around her, uh, and uh, she uh, was not subject to a prolonged illness uh, or pain at the end. So we give thanks for that, and we give thanks that she is now with the God who she so dutifully followed and so expressively uh, spoke about in her life. Uh, and uh, she is now at peace and in his loving presence. And so uh, this is a time where uh, we can now uh, pull together uh, to give thanks and to pray for uh, Charles, uh, King Charles, and for uh, the royal family, because of course he and they are a family at mourning. Uh, as we remember any family and any individuals who mourn at this time. And uh, there's a particular prayer that uh, was used by George VI in his New Year message in 1939 uh, uh, and into 1940, uh, which it's believed was given to him, had it suggested to him, uh, by, uh, by the Queen at that time. And it'll be familiar to uh, to many of you. It's from a poem by Minnie Louise Haskins. And I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. So I went forth, and finding the hand of God, trod gladly into the night. So as we come to this uh, coming weekend, our church, common, common with many churches at St Mary's, is open for prayer, uh, for reflection. We have uh, an opportunity to light a candle in the memory of the Queen, uh, and to contribute to a book of condolence, uh, which will be there. Bells are being rung uh, today on Friday uh, in the Queen's memory. And on Sunday, we will have our services at 8, 10 and 6 o'clock. And the Queen will be remembered and the royal family and the nation prayed for at each of uh, those services. Uh, looking further ahead, uh, the full, it, it seems likely that the, the uh, Queen's funeral will be uh, Monday, the 19th of uh, September. And if that's the case, then we will have a special service here at St Mary's, uh, which we hope will be for all of the churches together in Barnes at six o'clock on the 18th. If the timing of the funeral is different, then we will adjust that accordingly. Um, at our main service on Sunday at 10 o'clock, we will be keeping the readings that we would have, that are set for this Sunday, um, because uh, the Queen, as a woman of faith, uh, would have followed these readings and they speak also 
uh, as scripture so often does, of some of the fundamentals about her. So I'll just read a couple of extracts from each of the readings. The first is from the first book of the uh, letter to Timothy, chapter one. And St Paul writes, I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service. And then uh, later on in verse 17, to the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. And our gospel reading is the story of the search for the lost sheep. So Jesus told them this parable, which one of you having a hundred sheep and losing one of them does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbours, saying to them, rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. That speaks of the faith that was at the centre of the Queen's life faith uh, that we are called to follow. And so I want to conclude now with two prayers, one for uh, in rem remembrance of the Queen and second for, uh, the, for Ch King Charles and the royal family and our nation. So let us pray. Gracious God, we give thanks for the life of your servant Queen Elizabeth, for her faith and her dedication to duty. Bless our nation as we mourn her death and may her example continue to inspire us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Everlasting God, we pray for our new king. Bless his reign and the life of our nation. Help us to work together so that truth and justice, harmony and fairness flourish among us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.